Hi, I'm Carly Finlay and I am talking for Mormon City Library. Thank you so much for having me. I would like to acknowledge that I am um, here on Wurundjeri Country uh, in Nam, and I would like to pay my respects to Aboriginal elders past, present and emerging and if there are any Aboriginal people watching this live stream or video later, I extend my friendship and gratitude to you. As a writer, I am a guest on Aboriginal land and I always like to thank Aboriginal writers when I do my acknowledgement of country. They've been telling stories here for over 60,000 years since the beginning of time and it's so important that we continue learning and reading from Aboriginal writers. Um, I have a book, because it's not a library event, I have a book. Um, this is um, Cheeky Dog to Late Nation Back by Dion Beasley. It's illustrated by Dion Beasley and written um, with jo Johanna Bell. And Dion is a young man um, who lives in the Northern Territory. He is an Aboriginal man and he's a disabled man. So um, that's why I wanted to show it today because it's International Day of People with Disability. Uh, his book, Too Many Cheeky Dogs, has been, um, not this one, but the latest one, has been nominated for the um, Prime Awards. That's amazing. So I highly encourage you to go out to your library or your bookstore, um, a library online, borrow a box, to look up Aboriginal writers. Gail Kennedy is another writer that you should um, look up. But Gail is also a disabled woman and she's Aboriginal. And also um, there's a young writer called Val Marley Herman who is incredible and she writes a lot online. I can put an article by Val Marley in the comments so you can see it. She is incredible. So do go out and find uh, writing by Aboriginal writers, particularly um, Aboriginal disabled writers. I'm just doing a Google um, for this work. I interviewed her recently. She's an incredible young woman. Can I put a comment? I haven't done this before. Yes, I can. Here we go. There's an article by Van and Ali. Um, we will have some notes about the books I, I shared as well tonight. So, it's International Day of People with Disability today. Um, I'm Carly and I identify as having a disability. I have a skin condition called ichthyosis. Um, working particularly in doing my own tech is I've realised just how shiny my face is. Um, and I've got a ring light because the light up above isn't as great as I want it. But uh, I, I actually did an event last week for um, a video last week for the ABC, or I recorded a few weeks before that, but it was uploaded. And I asked the um, video editor what the best way um, I can control my shine on these kind of um, home video studios because all I've got is my MacBook and a ring light and the natural light here or the overhead light that I have to switch on. Uh, anyway, so I'm going tonight because that's just a part of my skin condition um, and also I will probably be applying cream but I'm not going to apologise for that because, you know, no one needs to apologise. So it's Disability Day and what more can I do then talk to you about books that are written by disabled people. So I'm going to go through a load of books before mine and then I'll talk about mine. So there's the amazing Dion Beasley book um, with collaborated with Johan Bell and it's just stunning. Look, there's illustrations. Dion has illustrated and Johan is just so lovely. So this is great for kids but it's also great for adults as well. And I have adults with kids, adult friends with kids, and they love the Cheeky Dog series. So go and borrow this one from the library. The next book I'm going to talk to you about, girl, which is a new release, Asphyxia. It is a huge book, and again, it is beautiful. So Asphyxia is a deaf woman. She lives, I think she lives 
lives in northern New South Wales. That's where I met her. And um, she has been making art and illustrating and doing like embedded access to so Auslan within, um, within performances for years. And she has written this book. It's, it's huge. It's so big. So big. And every page has these beautiful you see that illustrations as well as the writing and um i was reading her process of, of writing and she was really thinking how she wanted the art to be incorporated so this and and the cover it's stunning um uh, a, a ya young adult um fiction but it's based on her own experiences as a deaf woman and it's just stunning um i had a bit of a sneak peek at um a few chapters i actually have not read the full book but i had a sneak peek at a few, at a few chapters because asphyxia asked me to endorse it and it was just wonderful it is a really amazing book for young people um especially young deaf or disabled people to feel confident to build confidence to find a sense of identity and to um, learn about deaf culture. So Future Girl by Asphyxia. Uh, that came out, I think it came out in late year. The next one I am going to talk about is Face It. Oh, my little bookmark came out. Um, Face It is a book that is written or was written by I don't know which way to put it. Um, James Partridge and James Partridge wasn't a wonderful man. James Partridge um, was uh, injured in a car accident when he was 19. He experienced, he um, ended up with a facial difference and also a limb difference. And he founded a charity called, a charitable organisation in the UK called Changing Faces. And he has, um done so much to help people with facial differences uh form a sense of acceptance and identity and also educate people um one of the was putting posters of people in london tube stations um in the early 2000s i think and he's just done such amazing work to change the way the media portrays Facial differences and the way films portray facial differences as villainous. Um, so this is James's second memoir. I have read his first and second memoirs, and they're just so so great. Beautiful handbook um, for people who um, have a facial difference, and also for people who aren't, who don't rather. Um, a really great intro about. Um, experience when he had the car accident through how he was um his face was reconstructed and also um to the confidence that he's built and then he talked about um fascism which is like um discrimination towards people with facial differences he talks a lot about the campaigns that changing faces have done and he also interviewed a few people including me i've got a little feature in the middle um sadly james died in 2000 2020. Um, the thing about social media is that you find this news through social media. So I remember scrolling through Facebook one morning in August and seeing that he died, and, and I was really, really shocked that um, his life was cut so short. But his legacy is enormous. Um, in the last few years, he um, left Changing Faces and uh, other people, you know, left it to people to. He established an organisation called Face Equality International. Organization has a lot of different people with um, that um, support social and limb difference, and um, they coordinate. So you might have seen recently there was a campaign against the witches movie. Um, the witches movie depicted witches um, with alopecia and also with um, limb differences, and they Face Equality does a lot of work around that. So James is very, very missed, but this book is incredible. You should read it. Oh, sorry, then my, my bookmarks are in there. You should this, you know, this year or beyond. Now, what's you about is 
and it's called Break the Mould. From her work in Vogue, um, in British Vogue, uh, she was on the cover last year, I think, um, of British Vogue, and she's edited it as well. Um, she made a short such a woman, and she is a teacher, 20s or early 30s, and she is an incredible advocate for fashion inclusion and also for empowering young people, um, you know, with, who are short stature and who are not. Um, this book is beautiful. I had a bit of time to sit and read it last week. It came a few weeks ago. But it's got all of these um, really lovely affirmations um, around pride and also um, your own story. Um, I really like this page here. And it says, be day and she encourages people to think about accessibility things and it's just wonderful. I think that it's a it's a book that it's probably that um you know adults can read it as well. It's just and um I really can't wait to see some more interviews with Sinead doing this I hope to see one one day with her. Um the last book that I have on my pile is this one, Disability Visibility, which is edited by Alice Wong. She's an incredible woman. Alice um, is very prominent on Twitter and also Instagram. She founded the Disability Visibility Project, which is amazing. It collects all the stories and art disability. She does work with um, American government. Um, I think she's worked with Barack Obama before, and she's just such a great coordinator of disabled people of, of our stories. And she has edited this I think in June, and um, I'm going to read the blurb here. One in five people in the United States lives with disability. Some are visible, others are less apparent, but all are underrepresented in media and popular culture. Now, just in time for the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disability Act, activist Alice Wong brings together the urgent, galvanizing collection of contemporary essays by disabled people. Sorry, Harriet McBride Johnson's account of her debate with Peter Singer over her own personhood in original piece, two original pieces by authors such as Peter Brown and Harmon Germer from blog posts, manifestos, and eulogies to congressional testimonies and beyond. This anthology gives a glimpse into the rich complexity of the disabled the passions, talents, and everyday lives of this community. It invites readers to question their own understandings and celebrate and document disability culture in the now. It looks to the future and the past with hope and love. Um, it's a beautiful book. I have just started reading it. I've actually started listening to the audio book, actually, because um, I prefer that way to read. And it's just wonderful. The, the introduction uh, done by Alice, and she has someone else um, reading it, and another woman in the disabled community reading um, the book. Um, I am really excited because is, um, my friend and I, we do a little Instagram book club, Disability Reads. So if you pop over to my Instagram, at Carly Finlay, you will see um, beginning to read the Disability Visibility Project and we will, we will be discussing it, um, asking questions as well and hopefully people I'm really, really excited to listen to all your books that I do want to have a trip to as well. So there are four books, five books that I um, totally recommend you, you read, um, that you buy, or buy disabled people. They're very important. Is everyone, can, can people hear me again? I'm sorry. Um, I was talking before about the importance of reading books because it's Disability Day today and it's so important to read books by disabled people. Um, That is um, not alcohol, by the way. That is a elderflower drink. Last night I went out um, to a uh, staff party. I work at Melbourne Fringe as Access and Inclusion Coordinator. And of course, you know, not being out very much, not, not being socialising with people. I had two drinks and it felt like seven. Oh, gosh. Anyway, I've got some elderflower cordial, which I really like. Okay, great. I'm really glad the microphone is working now. 
So it, we've got um, probably about 20 minutes. I would love some questions. I'm going to talk to you about two other books now. This book is called Say Hello. Uh, it's written by someone called Carly Finlay. Look, the reviews are all right. Although I have been told in the reviews um, that I'm a terribly, no, a thoroughly terrible person, apparently. Anyway, don't read the reviews if you've written a book. Um, so I wrote Say Hello. Um, I wrote it, uh, it took about two years from idea to finish. Um, and it was, it, it was uh, published in January 2019. And it is a book uh, about me. It's a memoir. It's a manifesto. It talks about what it was like to have ichthyosis. I mentioned before I had ichthyosis. That's why my face is red. Um, my, and I also talk about how I expect or would like people, disabled people, to be treated. Um, I would really like to be able to go out without being asked why I look the way I do, or I would like, you know, to um, receive the same treatment in stores as other people, as non-disabled people do. Anyway, so I've written this book called Say Hello, and it's really weird to have a book out <laughs> with with my face on the cover. Um, one thing that I really wanted to do is put different perspectives in this book. Um, there's a lot of chapters in there about me, obviously, but there's also chapters around disability activism and who, um, who and what you can follow to be a better ally and to find um, like a sense of community and a sense of identity because that is really, really important too. Um, I, yeah, it, it was amazing last year. I, I'm, I'm so thankful that this came out before COVID because it meant that I got to do um, in real life events. And, you know, I got to travel and go to Bali and um, Byron and Perth and Sydney and Aubrey where I'm from. I grew up in Aubrey and yeah, it was, it was amazing to have that and, and now it's been available, it's been made available worldwide. Um, this is a really exciting story actually and it is a reason why accessibility matters. So I mentioned before that Harbin Gurma is in um, Disability Visibility book and Harbin is the first deafblind graduate from, um, from Harvard and she's an American woman uh, an, an, an Ethiopian American woman and she asked me if she could read my book and the way she reads books is that she reads through Braille. She needed an e-book so that her Braille reader could um, transfer the information to for her to be able to feel the words and it wasn't possible to get that in America so when she emailed me my book was available in paperback but it's a bit hard to get, you could, you could buy it from Australia or is available in audio book around the world, but those two options weren't available to her because they weren't accessible to her. Um, and they were not, it was not available in a ebook form uh, in America. And so I asked my publisher at HarperCollins if they could make it accessible so that Harbin could read it and other people could read it. So they sent Harbin an, a message and um, uh, sent her the ebook so she could read it, but they also sent me a contract. And now my book is available in all formats around the world, which is amazing. And um, accessibility has just opened up this new market. And now I'm seeing it from people who are um, reading it in England, in um, Europe, in Asia, yeah, in the Middle East. It's amazing. So, uh, you know, accessibility opens up markets. The other book I want to talk to you about as well is Growing Up Disabled in Australia. Probably the most anticipated release of 2020, 2021. It was supposed to be out in June. And uh, of course, COVID put it out, put it off. We decided very early on that we were not going to release this book this year because uh, the, dis you know, the, the disabled writers um, are you know, susceptible be able to have events. It's very hard to sell books without, you know, events. I do feel for all the writers that have um, launched books this year. They are amazing. And so uh, it will be out in February 2021. I am extremely excited for this. Uh, in, when was it? Uh, August or July 2018, 
I got asked to write for Growing Up African in Australia. So my mum is South African and Maxine Beniba clark approached me to write about my experience growing up African in Australia and I did. And on the same day I said yes to that, I, I texted my agent, Jacinta, and I said to her, hey, can we please pitch Growing Up Disabled to Black Ink? And we did. I, I wrote a proposal. Um, and we had a meeting and by August we got a book deal and so I knew about that for a very long time and we didn't we weren't allowed to till this day disability day in 2018 so nearly five months uh, and now we have um, yes it will be available in all formats as well um, someone said uh, someone asked Barbara asked if it will be available in all formats yes it's going to be available in paperback ebook and also audiobook we've got a disabled um, narrator as well so uh, I pitched that book to Black Ink and they said yes and we've been working on this for a very long time it'll be nearly three years there are so many amazing authors in this book um, uh, people that you might know, we've got Elle Gibbs who formerly worked at People with Disability Australia. Elle just won the um, Disability Leadership Institute Leslie Hall Lifetime Achievement Award today. That's incredible. Um, Ricky Buchanan's in here as well and the Disability Leadership Institute Award for Social Justice. Amazing. Um, we also have um, Sam Drummond who has written this beautiful story have Dion Beasley before we've got um, illustrations his cheeky dogs book in here um, we've also got um, Andy Jackson who is an amazing poet we've got um, people that you might not know as well we've got um, Eliza Hull who you might know from podcasting and music but the people you might not know are people like Patrick Gunasekra, who is just amazing, um, wrote a, a beautiful piece about um, being a culturally and linguistically diverse person with a disability. Uh, we've got Oliver Mills, who I don't have it on actually today, right now, but um, he's designed the logo for International Day People with Disability, the, the brooch today. Um, him. We've got people who are elders, Yvonne Fain, Fran Henke, Kath Duncan. We've got people growing up, Isis Holt and Lucy Carpenter are still in their teens. Um, we've got some other young people in their 20s. We've got poetry, we've got drawings um, and we also have some interviews. Um, I did an interview with Jordan also did an interview actually I didn't do an interview with Jordan Field John I edited his interview someone else did it um, interview with this amazing woman called Jane Rosengrate who is an Aboriginal woman and she grew up in institutions and was treated very badly and has now campaigned to change or um, abolish disability institutions and so um, yeah someone said here Jester said that um, it would have been hard to narrow down stories yes it absolutely was we had the hunger for this book both from the audience uh, the readers rather and also the um, contributors was enormous um, we had 366 submissions which is incredible and there's like 40 something people in there I don't have a piece in there I've only got I've only written the introduction um, so that will be out in February I'm really excited about it um, so hopefully we'll get some in-person events have some time for questions to ask questions um, to choose who do we uh, yes it actually was challenging so there were so many amazing stories and we really wanted a diversity or I really wanted a diversity of experiences of disability types and also I wanted a culturally linguistically gender diverse um, group of people and so it was really um, hard you know there, there were amazing stories and I hope that some of the stories have been published elsewhere we did um, tell the people who were unsuccessful where else they should try to get their stories published um, but yeah it was hard it was it was really hard to do it I was reading the stories in batches so the um, batches of 20 at a time so 
uh, it was hard to choose because I'd say, oh, this one's great, and then I read another one and say, oh, that one's on the list, and then I have to shorten the list, and I had a long list, and then I had a short list, and, and now we had the 40-something people. And then I also looked for gaps as well. So from what we didn't have, um, there's a writer in there called Tubby um, from Melbourne, um, culturally a linguistically diverse, hard of hearing um, person, and they um, submitted a piece which was great, but I didn't have a piece about a disabled parent, and I rang Covey and I said to them, um, I really loved your piece that you submitted, but I'm actually looking for a piece disability and parenting, do you think you could submit something, and um, they did, so that was the way we could keep them in. Um, and the other the other thing that happened was um, there was a person who submitted um, an amazing story but it just wasn't the right fit for the book and Black Ink came to me and said would you know any, of anyone that's a teacher that will that could be teachers no it's a disabled teacher and I said yes I do actually one of the people that submitted and so now she Christy has got a um, uh, a job um, doing the teacher's notes for the book which is amazing and I'm so so thrilled for that um, are there any authors being published for the first time? Yes, absolutely. I would say that most of the authors in here are people that have been published for the first time. Um, but there are some people who you might not have heard. Um, I do. One, one thing that I'm really excited about is these books lead to publication. Um, I did an event last year at the Byron Writers Festival with Maxine Beniba Clark and Sarah her surname I'm sorry, um, who also wrote for Growing Up African and um, her piece was amazing it was about hair for hair and uh, she has now got a book deal with Black Ink I know so many people whose work uh, like you know I think Ben Moore was in Growing Up Asian in Australia and then he edited Growing Up Queer and he's had all of the other success that he's had since then but yeah I think it's really led to big opportunities so yeah, there's people there that um, I'm sure will, you know, do really amazing things after this book. Oh, thank you. You can, um, there's the link in the, um, um, any other questions? It'd be great to get some more before I go. This is a fun chat. Sorry about the tech. Really hard that now we have to do our own tech for everything like I really took that for granted about turning up and speaking and having other people do the tech and now I've got to do it that's probably my only tech issue actually during the whole of COVID that my um, Facebook live dropped out so that's not bad um, has anyone else got any questions I've got a few more minutes I've got until about 10 past 8 I mean we could go for longer but you know it might just be me talking um, We've also got, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, we've got a number of events that hopefully will happen next year around the country and, and, and hopefully um, they'll still be continued to be live streamed in a post-COVID world. Um, where to now? Have I got another book planned? That's a really great question. Um, well, today was ridiculously busy. I have four events, so tomorrow I'm going to sleep, but I have got another event on Saturday. Melbourne Fringe just, just wrapped up as well, so it's been very busy, very busy few weeks. Um, in terms of another book plan, yes, I have a kids book planned, which I'm really excited about. Um, someone said to me, oh thanks Liz, you said the sound is good. Um, someone sent to me uh, a beautiful illustration, and I get lots of fan art, which is quite nice, it's quite weird to be thought of to have fan art, but yeah, that, that's, that's a strange thing. But um, I got some beautiful illustrations sent to me, and I uh, have been thinking about a kids book for a while, so I'm working on a kids book. Um, yeah, hopefully I can do some of that in the Christmas holidays. I facilitate a group for people with disabilities. Do I have any tips for them? Yes. Um, oh, I have a Facebook group that I um, run, um, which which people are about, uh, welcome to join in the live in the comment. I'll just um, type it so you can so you can search. Um, disabled and chronically ill or 
so do find that Facebook group if you like. Um, they can they can join that if they are identifying as disabled or chronically ill or deaf. Um, my tips would be like something every day. Facebook status, even if it's like a note on your phone, even if it's um, a tweet. I also recommend starting a public blog or a public Facebook page where people can follow you and find your work. People want to see that you're an audience. Um, I'm going to grab a thing that I did for another library. Um, I did one for the City of Melbourne Library <coughs> um, a few months ago and I will find it and I'll put it in in, in the chat because this had a writers getting started. My biggest tip would be to, um, you know, lots of people tell me that they that they love to write but they don't write. Um, so if you want to be a writer, you've got to write. Um, yeah, finding, making a public profile like for your writing, um, putting it on Facebook, putting it on Twitter, where editors and publishers can see that you can build a profile, that you can build an audience, that you can um, write to deadline. That's really important. When I was getting, um, when I was getting publishers, um, they were looking at my social media followings, they were looking at what I'd already done with them. Um, already, you know, written stuff for the media, so they obviously saw that I had a good track. Um, are there books that feature disability inclusion without minimising? Oh, that's a for children. I think the one that I mentioned before was um, was really good, the Sinead Burke one. But I feel like I feel like young, like dis disability books for young people are quite lacking. I mean, they they're sort of like um just incidental inclusion, aren't they? Um, maybe the library could give some um, good tips on that because I, I feel like that that, that is really lacking. Um, Liz asked me, I heard on social media, I read on social media that I had a busy day. What did I do? I So it's disability day today, as I mentioned before, and I had to do three other events and this one, um, and yeah, I've done a lot of speaking events. So I was saying that I felt, I did some social media as well. I said I felt like the Vicar of Sibley um, in <laughs> uh, rushing around and, and doing everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, has anyone got any more questions? I'm going to stay on for a little bit. I've got about four or five minutes left. It's lasted for 18 minutes. Very good. What I might do actually is um, put these books on my Instagram so you can see them. My Instagram, I'll put my handle in there. Perhaps I've opened some doors, opened some doors for people writing. Um, you know, I often disability opportunities. There we go. There's my Instagram if you want. I'll put the link on there. Yeah, and it'll, it will be time for to relax. I I will be very very excited to have a relaxing day tomorrow. I might go to the cinema. Haven't been for so long. I can't remember the last movie I've seen. Um, yeah. One last question before I go. I can't see one last question. You're all very quiet. Did I get a release date for my latest book? Yes, sorry, I didn't. Um, it's in February. I think it's the second, second or third of February. Yeah. And that might even be late January. I'm, I'm not not sure um, about that. But yeah, it's the second, um, second or third of February. Um, Barbara. Oh, there's some books for kids. Parachutes, little, called little parachutes. Yes, yeah. little parachutes. Um, in the chat there. Um, for having me tonight. I do apologise about the tech. Um, 
been fun. It's been always good to talk about books. My MacBook is actually stacked up on um, a number of books. Uh, cookbooks because you know they're nice and thick. Uh, I've got the colour of Morocco. I've also got Otolenghi's flavour and which I just love. And also um, in praise of Veg by Alice Zelabsky under my MacBook. Think about writing for children myself. Yes, I, I, I just said that earlier. I, I really want to write a kids book and um, I illustrator. Um, so thank you. I'm really, really excited. You can actually, if you if you want to um, put this on hold at the library right now, growing up the save in Australia, you can. Um, or order it from your bookstore, independent bookstores are best. Um, and also there is Say Hello, which is currently on hold at libraries. People tell me that it's always on hold. Um, always on loan. The books that I talked about today, before uh, Faith James Partridge, Future Girl by Asphyxia, hmm. um, Cheeky Dogs by Daniel Beasley and Johanna Bell, Break the Mold by Sinead Burke, and The Disability Visibility Project by Alice Wong. Um, I'm going to pop them on my Instagram soon, or and probably my Facebook page as well. Um, I hope that you have a very good night. Thank you so much for having me tonight. Disability Day. I am going to go to sleep soon. Bye.